Welcome back to Edition. This Sport Matters writing here is a special edition. Just earlier on, we had Jonathan Akobore, M-O-N, who came in to talk about his aspiration of becoming the NFF president. And he has actually explained certain things which he thinks could turn around football in the country. It's a big, big avenue to unite the country. It's also a big avenue to make big money. We just hope that uh, he'll be given the opportunity to do it right. Yeah, joining me is a crew in the house. I am a little bit weary. I'm not too comfortable writing here with these two gentlemen, but they're my two lieutenants who do it pretty well whenever I'm around or if I'm not around. Olasu Good afternoon. It's nice being here on a Monday afternoon in the city of Lagos and I just realized that it's one champion that just let this seat that I'm sitting down. With. Okay, another champion is climbing yeah, on top. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Also joining me right on set is Joel Mwake Go. Joel, good afternoon. Always a pleasure to be here. Like you talk about champion. The champion was sitting here too. Aha, uh -huh. that yeah. makes it two. So okay. That's a local champion. champion. The one that left here was the international champion. Don't worry. You will know that he's not a local champion by the time you leave the set. All right, uh, guys. Uh, Jonathan was in here earlier on. He spoke about his aspiration. Let me ask you to me. I asked him a pertinent question. Why is it that People that play the game are shining away. He emphatically told me they are not. They are ready to take the right position of the right things. Honestly, and um, his response, and uh, if you know, if you had not brought Jonathan to the studio today, I wouldn't have known that he's this someone that you know exudes confidence this much. Yes, very I'm, much confidence. I'm, I'm highly impressed. I'm honestly highly impressed. And what he said that you know his colleagues and his mates and his ex internationals are not shining away. It's just the system that we've always been complaining about mm. on this one. And I'm highly impressed by his response when, you know, Nicola asked him, well, how would he get, you know, money from the corporate sector? If, because we know that what, whatever is coming from the government might not be enough for football. Yeah. That his response was also what, we, what we've been emphatically saying on this table, that, you know, lack of transparency from football administrators in Nigeria. And Jonathan, either he stays here or is out there in, in Europe or whatever he is in, 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 the, in, in the world, he understands Nigerian football. Mm -hmm. He knows that you won't put your money where you can't get accountability. Yeah. And that is just a summary of, you know, of his intending administration. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate that. Uh, for you, Joel, um, the election is just a couple of weeks away, let's say eight weeks or nine weeks from now. Um, he said something that really caught my fancy that football must go back to what it used to be. It must be attractive. And for Nigerian football, um, I don't think we've conceived, even if we have it, we've not established it. He did mention the attribute of having a philosophy, a style of play. Definitely, it's, it's important. And um, for somebody like Jonathan coming out to say he wants to go for that position, it's really, really good. It's going to change the face of Nigerian football and sport entirely in Nigeria. Because you know, the first major step, uh, we are seeing ex-internationals coming back to say, look, I want to take this position, and it's exactly what we want. It's not just coming in. Being a better player doesn't make you a better coach or a better administrator. But right now, from one, from the way you have spoke, it tells us this man has been somewhere, you know, um, understanding what Nigerian football in, administratively and also wants to take over and make sure we go to the next level. For me, this is the best way, this is the best step. Mm. It's not just football right now. Other sports should emulate this mm. fashion. All right. Um, as the day continues to go by, we'll follow um, the really strong interest and passion Jonathan is exuding to become the NFF president. And I can assure you that uh, whatever it takes, he will definitely get the support because he's one young man who believes that he has what it takes administratively to turn football around in the country, Nigeria. All right, guys, let's come down straight to some very big, big, big issue. WAFCON is still on. The Super Falcons are grazing on to get to the finals. We then make it to the finals. You come here. I need to ask you this because when you play against the host, I asked Joel this on Friday. Joel was giving me a proper Simon, which I've absorbed. But when you play against the host, it is you playing against 12 men, exactly. even not even 13. Yeah, you know, even if we're going to play against the referee, the president of Morocco, and the Minister of Sport, and what have you, even if we are playing against CAF, there is something that is motivating our guests right now. Because the first match ever in, in what we call female championship before it comes WAFCON now, the first match of Super Falcons was against the Moroccans. Yeah, and that's true. That, yes. I mean, yes. Yes. That was 8 0. The second match was about 6 0. Six nil, yeah. So, we, and the, the, there is something that I believe so. But don't forget that a lot of stuff has transformed. Yeah, that's what I'm exactly. saying that, you know, the, with the level of, you know, their development in that country so far, and what the Super Falcons has been able to transform into right now, 
there is this confidence being in them that fine, we have the night title with Kitty. Making it 10, it's not it's not going to be easy against against the host, though even not the final. But against the semi-finalists, the Moroccans that they know that anything away from here is solidifying their progress on the continent and in the world football. So the Falcons, Falcons they, they don't have any extra, uh, any extra motivation than to bring the 10th title to home. You can't bring the 10th title to home, maybe they can't win your semi-final. So, so for me, Super Falcons, a sure bet. For you, Joel, um, today's game, how do you want to review today's game? You know, it's going to be very cagey. I must, I must, I must say this. I've watched the Moroccans play very pacey, fast from the wings, and they have a very robust style in the midfield, how they move out the ball. For Super Falcons, I can only say the defense has really lived up to billing after their first two games. What sort of game are you expecting to see today? Well, um, both are both are have this attacking you know style of play, but they are faster because they have younger you know ladies in their team. Mm -hmm. Well, you're talking about the midfield, we have more experience than them in the midfield. I think it's simple. Um, but with, uh, I don't know you know say this, but I have to say it. You have a governor out there joining the coaching crew. Right? Oh, what, what, what's going to be his contribution? You just want to look my trouble this afternoon. <laughs> just want to look my, what's going to be his contribution? Yeah, he, no, he, he, he's, not, he's not a technical... He's, he's, not, he's, not, the money. he's not a technical... I don't want to talk about what happened. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. He, he, so, but but, but for, for me, um, we're going to expect a really pacey football. They're going to give our defenders you know, um, a run for their money. Yeah. So coming in from the wing, you have Chepa, one of the highest scorers, the, the captain of the Moroccans. She's sneaky. You know, quick, you know, quick feet and all that. So, and she switches position. You can't, you can't pin her down. It's going to be difficult. So, I wish to attach one player to her because she's the playmaker. She, she's so strengthful. Yeah. She comes to the midfield play and goes back to the attack. She comes to the left and right wing. So, she switches position. If we can, you know, stop those runs from this for the flank. Then I jump go out in up front. All right. If the... you I, okay. No, go ahead. If you remember what I said in the last match against the, the Cameroonians, I said the the coach Randy Wilder needed to. You know, to, 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 to inform his girls on game management. That's exactly what you need to do. Especially when you're leading. Yeah, you, probably even when you're not leading. But are you aware that we're lucky against the Cameroonians? Lucky? We won, but we're lucky. They didn't create that many chances. That, that was, that, that's the Falcons. That's the reason you're better than that. You the, 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 the both of you, in I, football, I think. In I football, think, you create your own luck. Okay. If you don't score, you don't play football. I don't want to believe in luck. I believe in hard work. All right, let, let, let's 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 quickly put it straight forward. So, come in, what's this line going to look like? Yeah, and the scoreline. I mean to say the scoreline. Yeah, it's not going to. You know, the Moroccans are not known for that deep defending. They go out all that time. You know, from their midfield, they are, they are the defense also play defensive high line because it comes towards the midfield. Scoreline. What I expect. Scoreline. The scoreline. Yeah. The scoreline. Scoreline. Two zero. And from you. Two one Falcons. Okay, you're expecting the Moroccans to score? Nigeria, yeah, they will, they will surely score. Come on, they will, I, they will I, score. I, I are thought, good in doing that, but I, we're going to edge them out. I thought you told the same line with Sukomi. 2-0. No, it's 2-1. Okay, yeah. uh, should I give one prediction? Go ahead. Don't should give I? the element of surprise. This is uh, part of uh, why, why, why are you guys not always giving me a sure. chance? You element of surprise. You won't say we are going to be the defense. Let's say what you're going to say. Okay, do you want me to, to verse this here? Yes. It's going to go the way the game between Senegal and Tunisia went. Extra time. No, no. Not against this whole night. Okay, let's let it be. Another game for today is the game between um, South Africa and Zambia. I, I, I was a little bit on the edgy side when the Botswanas were edged out yesterday, but that is football for you. South Africa, Zambia, two not uh, South Africans, I beg your pardon, who knows each other in and out. The extra motivation for Zambians is just that if they, are, they are men just won the Zaba Cup yesterday, and they have the motivation to go into the final of the Women, the women African Championship. That's against South Africa. But this is the same South African they've been playing for South Africa with. They know each other in, out, in, in. And there is no two ways to beat South Africans at the beginning. For you, the South Africans have a mission to pick the WAFCON. And do you think the Zambians will be the cog in the wheel? The Zambia will be a problem for South Africa. Considering the way even the Zambians qualify, it was just. I mean, with the stroke of, you know, by the, just by the biscuits. No, so use luck. Use no, luck. No, 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 not okay. luck. Not, not luck. luck. All out pressing. Okay. But you can't stop South Africa. You mm. can't stop their attack. They have a formidable attack. Mm. And they press high. They play like Europeans. They press you high. Mm. They don't, they force you to load on the ball. They pick the ground balls and they put it on the ground play. Okay. And you can't take this guy when it comes to tic tac play. So, on the next All so, right. Uh, uh, both games comes up today. And your sincerely super screen television will be broadcasting both games to you wherever you are in the world. First game is between Zambia and South Africa. It is 5 p.m. Nigerian time. And the other one, the big one, yes, the big one is between Morocco and Nigeria. 
That's 7 p.m. Nigerian time. So with, wherever you are, just please support Falcon the very best. I want them to pick the trophy sincerely so that more smiles will continue to be on our faces. They've always brought smiles to our faces whenever they play out there. I'm talking about the Super Falcon. But there were games played yesterday. Quickly, um, now we know that Senegal and Cameroon are qualifiers. Yeah, we're going to play the Intercontinental Championship. Yes. Uh, with teams like uh, Thailand, Panama, I think like one other country. So it's okay. not bad. But one person has to qualify. Yes, one person has to qualify. Yeah, well, I just, I, I, I love to see the Senegalese there. For you, uh, Sukumi. So Honest guys, uh, with a style of play and their size. Style of play and one thing that is really working for them is strength. They have it in abundance. Hmm. They, they can run for but, 90 minutes. But, but, but can they edge out the Americans and the Canadians? All right. We've we, we got to see that that's the scoreline right there out on the screen there. Uh, it ended nil-nil uh, between the Senegalese and Tunisia, and it went into the dead ball game penalty, and the Senegalese did pick it up. Uh, Botswana was defeated 1-0 by Cameroon. That was a very sweet one for the Cameroonians because they'll be in the playoff. All right, guys, let's come back home to the domestic league. I'm happy that um, Kevin Echemike and Jonathan Apuberuri were proponents of the domestic league. They played in the uh, domestic league. They saw it all. Uh, that as it may, we have a new champions Rivers United. Uh, for me, the fun face now there, I must be honest, because uh, if you look at the way um, the league was concluded, there were a lot of controversies, there were beat up, there were knock ups, there were disciplinary action, and uh, the big one. They were punched. Yeah, the big one. Um, I don't know why people are celebrating or having a fun fair, Kanu Pillars relegated. As you come, let me start with you before, before we come to the champions. It has to be there, you know, they are indisciplined in, in the league this season. You know, a, a lot of teams, not even just teams, not even their, you know, other teams in, in the NPFL, individuals, are, you know, what, what they, are, they have keen interest in Nigerian football. They are very, very happy that kind of player, you know, has gone down into NNL because they have been escaping. They are not just escaping; they are escaping via the lackadaisical like, approach of the LMC and the N, uh, and the NFF. Those ones that you know, it's it's just like everyone against. The management. Yeah. Kano Pila just didn't go down. They didn't play good in this, in this season all through. They have internal problem, financial problem, and everything. Now they are now meeting all financial that. problem. The state government supported them all through. Yeah, you just heard about Atlant spending one billion. Yes, I'm going to come to that. You saw they didn't reflect in the team. Okay, uh, for you, Joel, we have four teams down the throne: Katsina United, Heartland FC, Kano Pillars. MFM. MFM, we know very well they had issues. But for Heartland FC, 1 billion naira. It is not 1 million. 1 billion naira. For me, if we really want to call the spade a spade, I think the entire management of Heartland should be brought to book and probed. I'm happy that the government came out and raised his hands up and said, my hand is not dead. I mean, how did you guys spend almost a billion naira? I mean, they should launch, ICT should just go after the management and EFCC. How did they spend those money? Even the captain of the team, who speaks at Lamin, like the manager of the players, should come out and tell everybody they should be paid slips. How? What salary did they pay? Did they pay? Did they pay sign off? Did they buy players? So how monies were spent should I mean should be spread out in black and white. So we know exactly what the problem is. Probably they will do overhaul of the management. This is Nigeria football, for God's sake. You you will you, be surprised to find that you still have the same people there in the next season. <laughs> but I'm, I'm telling you what, going back to the NLL, talk what happened next season. These guys are not coming back. If you want to play with football, go to NNL. All right. Uh, that as it may, there's a champion, and we must say congratulations to Rivers United. Stanley Oguma has done it again, and uh, they'll be in the content for you to come in. Uh, it's a well deserved victory because from week 14, they maintained consistency. And I, I listened to what the governor of River State uh, said in person of uh, His Excellency uh, Winston Wike. He said, We carry out, we don't win out. No, no, <laughs> 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 I, I remember that on this table we said, I think from week 20, we've been saying if they could maintain the momentum, and that, that would be all for them. And you need to understand. Everything worked in, everything worked in, worked you, you also need to understand yeah. what we call experience in that team. At the point, Raymond starts by, you know, we're leading the log, and before you know it, that, you know, capitulation a little bit shows that, okay, they just came to the MPFL. And that, when Rifa's United mounted the, you know, the log, there was no going back for them. They had everything working for them. They, yeah. they have a seasoned, a seasoned manager, a seasoned manager that knows how to get things done, you know, from the government. You know, he, he will share everything. Apart from the government. Go away from the bureaucracy of the government. Go to the government so to say, this is what we need. I remember he was, he was, he was a coach of Sharks, the then Sharks and all that, yeah. you know, uh, transforming into uh, uh, Rivers United. So, 
the league, the EPL has been like, you know, his burning ground. He knows the in and out of the EPL. He knows how to manage players. Yeah. Did you ever hear a grass related player getting injured and staying for like two months, three months? No. And he had depth in that, and that's what worked out for him. Okay. He won a lot of away games. Okay, still within the MPFL, we have the highest goal scorer. His name is Akuneto. Yes, uh, with 19 goals. 19 goals. 19 goals. Yeah. 19 goals. You, you just need to understand that the consistency. You might not necessarily get goals in all the 38 matches, but when you get goals that make sure that if it is just one one goal that qualifies you, you know, that, that brings three points to your team, mm -hmm. that shows you know you, you are impactful. Um, yeah, it's good it. com compared to last last time I had like, about 15 goals. I think there was one goal out Salami was still in the league. All right, I had so two goals. You know. Uh, it only shows the attackers are scoring, but how many penalties? We don't care to know. What's no. The, what's important is they had 19 goals in the league and some assists. A quick one. The total goals called by top scorers within the MPFL goal was 132 goals. For me, that is massive. Okay. I did a calculation and I said, we're moving. Even if our football is not moving, the players are moving. All right, guys. Time is not our friend today because of the special guest we had. Let's talk some athletics. So, come we're not doing well, though. We're honestly, honestly, we're not doing, we're not doing well. The, the momentum that they built in, in Benin that ensured the qualification to championship out there in Loredo. It's I don't know how and what exactly is going on with our players. Even I must sure that everybody is hoping to, you know, banking as a medal on. We've, we've not been seeing the best of her and all our contingents. It's just the one story from the other. Uh, it's, it's, it's really depressing. For you, Joel, what, what do you think could be wrong? I, I heard from a very strong feeler, a reliable source, that the athletes are complaining about their allowances. Could that be a problem? Yes, um, that could affect them psychologically. But I tell you what, now, like in football, you have a coach. But right now, I don't know if this would have individual coaches. And who are the coaches? What are the, what are the pedigree? Because you cannot tell me you're bringing one, you know, somebody that, I mean, you, um, that works with cow in one place and tell me, tell me he's my coach. Hmm. You only tell me how to run 100 meters and all that. So who are the coaches? What are the antecedents when it comes to this particular sport? We know AC Bremen have a coach that wants, you know, did long jump and all that. And look at which it has gotten out. So what about others? The problem is, is the individual coaches of these athletes on the international level. Are they engaged by Nigeria in the Federation? Of okay, you know what? what you know what, due to time factor, due to time factor, we're going to take a very special session for the athletics event itself. It's, it's random up on Sunday, yeah. but when we come in on Wednesday, we'll give it enough time to diagnose and really see what is really happening to that particular thing. Let's move into our last segment of the show because of time transfer. I'm happy to report that Calvin Bassi will be undergoing the medical test with IAS. Well. A yeah, good one for Calvin Bassi. He wants to apply straight somewhere else, and Ajax is the right place to go. That is one team that you can develop and go to all the big clubs in the world. You mm. remember, look, look at the, where Ajax players are today. You have a CH in Chelsea, other quality players. Manchester players. United is being filled with Ajax. Oh, well, yeah, so that's football for you. Mm. And Cal this guy is still very young. He has a lot to give to football. And so, what he played you know, so far with the national team, he has been impressed worldwide. So, taking Scotland to, 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 to Holland, good move. Just like Aribu somebody, is coming to England. Somebody asked me about his transfer, and I said, to IAS, uh, his financial product. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah. All right, for you, Honestly. for you, Lewandowski is almost done. Barcelona. Uh, yeah, for, for the three million pounds. Bayern said no, no installment payments, no pay later, no guru, guru. Give us for the three million ahead. He's very the cash out. Yeah. He's very the cash out. I'm the cash out. He just has one yeah. one season to go. I never can tell. Him. I get injured and stay for next season. You guys lose. The Lastly, uh, guys, I don't know where Arsenal is getting this money from. It, it, it's been a very long while. I see Arsenal spending. You know, I, I hope they didn't use Emirates to grow money. <laughs> you know, because because what you need to understand well, they get money for IMF. In the last, in the last. Kevin is laughing. Kevin is an Arsenal fan, so he, he, he's happy. In the, last, <laughs> in the last six years, Arsenal, Arsenal Football Club, Arsenal Football Limited, Arsenal everything, call them and. They brought the session We're not, we're not, hold on. Sukum, nobody's asking you about, I am, I am asking you, where are they getting their money from to sign up? You, you see, Sukum can be very biased. You need to understand that the, the kind of bashing we were giving as a Wenger then, you need to run a football club like a football club, not a kind of economy. As a Wenger had his own philosophy, but the truth remains that when Real Madrid, when Real Madrid signed, Abeloa, Ronaldo, and about three, four players. They got money for IMF and the Paris club. Okay. What, what, did, what did they use that money? Okay. Well, gentlemen. Arsenal has, Arsenal has Only two players. players. Gentlemen. Gentlemen. This is my show. Don't run it down for me. Arsenal has just signed Zinchenko from Man City. 
We, we just they need to invest in that team. The likes of um, Ketia and all that, they can't take them to Champions League. Okay. That's why you need to invest in that team. That's, that's, what, you program, that's what they are doing right now. So signing the Zichenko, which is not bad, an experienced player, I mean to be on that defense and run on the is a is a wing back, not just a full back. All right, I've always told you, I've always told you if I have these two friends of mine, these two lieutenants of mine, I am not always comfortable because they want to run it down. But we've got a run of the show. It's been an interesting one having our special guest earlier on in person of Jonathan Akobore who came in. A very big thank you. And so coming, thanks for coming in. Joy, thanks for coming in. Not forgetting Kevin Etemike, who also was on the show. He was here on Friday, and he's actually doing so much for grassroots football, and the scouting program is ongoing. Big thanks to the crew, yes, ever-reliable crew of Tayo Lawrence Shola. Not forgetting Ahmed Adidagba, Mr. Favor, um, my producer Michael, and Joe Odogu. Until we meet again on Wednesday, it is Pop Matters. As I say, bye for now. Till we see you again. <laughs>